Hi, everyone. It's um, Monday, February 13th. Uh, great to be with you today. Uh, I um, I know I was on vacation uh, last week, the week before. I know I fouled up the dates, okay? For some reason, my brain told me there were 30 days in January, and obviously there's 31. <laughs> Uh, so I hope you forgive me with that, uh, and I hope you're able to to kind of go through the minefield and say, well, he said Tuesday, so he's got the wrong date. This has got to be the, the devotion. Um, yeah, I was on vacation last week. I uh, went to Costa Rica with my son, and we did a little surfing, um, and, and just had a great time uh, together. Uh, but it's great to be back with you. Uh, we are continuing this service called uh, Overcome. Um, and, and and the idea here is that these hard things in life that we're looking at in this short series, this three-week series, uh, that, that God comes to us in his strength and power in Jesus Christ. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. And in him, we can overcome these things uh, uh, be, because God is with us and his power is with us and his person, his very self is with us, right? Uh, and, and so, uh, uh, we, you know, there's various Bible verses. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, right? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So uh, this idea of these things are hard, uh, but we can overcome them in the power of Jesus Christ. That's our focus, um, and, and we always want to maintain this reality of grace that um, it's not about us being strong and great and overcoming, but it's about knowing that that uh, in Jesus Christ, uh, uh, even when we foul up, right, uh, even when we fall short, we are forgiven, and that empowers us to begin brand new, uh, to to uh, to use uh, the, the gifts that he gives us to go forward and overcome in his name. So we have that both that, that grace and that guidance uh, in, in our lives. Uh, this last Sunday, yesterday, I hope you're able to join us uh, for worship personally uh, or uh, online. And, and if so, I pray that you are blessed. Uh, we're going to hit some of those high points uh, uh, th this week and maybe add a few things to them, right? Uh, but this last Sunday, I kind of started the sermon with that um, with that movie, The Castaway, and, and uh, how uh, he, the, he was all alone on this island, and he found water, he found food, he, uh, in various ways he was going to survive, right? But then he became so lonely and alone, right? It, it, it just it blew him away. And he, um, he took, a, a, I think it was a volleyball, and he drilled, uh, 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 he, he kind of put a face on it, right? He, and he was able to draw a face on it. And the, because the volleyball said Wilson, the, the company that made it, he called this guy Wilson, right? And, he t and through the whole movie, he's talking with this. And when that, when that volleyball finally uh, um, gets blown into the ocean, he weeps and weeps and weeps because he's all alone, right? We were not made to go it alone. Uh, God says, uh, said to, to Adam, it's not good for man to be alone. And this is before sin entered the world. Sin separates us. Sin causes us to go it alone. We, we turn our backs on God and we turn our backs on each other and we go it absolutely alone and we're empty and we're, and we're, uh, and we're not fulfilled and, and, and we need to have people in our lives and yet there's so many things getting in our way. But God said this to Adam before sin, that, that yes, God was there for him and that's one of the things we'll look at. In his grace, God is always there for us in our aloneness, right? Uh, uh, and, and in all of his promises, he promises to be with us. Um, and yet... God also uh, um, it, it knows that we need other human beings. He created Eve then for Adam, right? So he wouldn't be alone that, that way as well. Um, I thought I'd read a psalm today. It, it kind of uh, hits on both those things here in a second. Uh, I dropped my glasses here. So the psalm, is, I mean, excerpt from Psalm 42. Here we go. As the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? And so he feels all alone that God, as if God isn't there for him. And, and his, I don't know if you've ever felt that way. Uh, but sometimes we feel very distant from God. Sometimes it, there can be lots of reasons for it, right? Um, and and uh, we can bang each other. Well, you ought to have more faith, all right? Well, you're going through a lonely, you're going through a hard time. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about that, right? That, that we feel alone because God's not there. But there's also this aspect, and in his grace, he is there for us. We'll see that. There's also this aspect of needing people. It goes like, and it, it goes like this. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throne. So, throne. so he, he remembers the people, see? The people he had relationship with, too. And so this, uh, the writer of this psalm, and it's interesting, Psalm 42 and 43 uh, probably were one psalm at one point. 
and, and, uh, and they're connected, certainly. And three times there's this refrain. He's kind of talking to himself in this dark, dark place he's in, in this, this place of loneliness that, that he thinks God is in their form or feels as if God is in their form. And, and, he's, and it seems like there aren't any people there for him either. Um, and, and he says this, Why are you so downcast, O my soul? So this is his response talking to himself. Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. Hope here is, is not a question mark, but put your certainty in God, right? Put your certainty in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And, and so this is the refrain. Three times he talks to himself and he says, hey, why are you so downcast? Why are you so disturbed? We, I know you feel all alone, but the truth is, the certainty of truth is that God is with you. And that he raises up people to be with you, and he gives you direction in this life. And so in this one psalm, we have this reality of grace and guidance. And that's, that's what we're going to look at um, uh, in, in our loneliness. God's graces us with his presence. He has compassion on us. So we'll look at this this week as well. At the same time, he, he guides our lives. And as I mentioned yesterday, I, I purchased some fear and trepidation because uh, I... I, I because you don't want to hit either extreme as if you you okay just do these steps right and and you won't be lonely anymore well uh, yeah but I have a hard time doing those steps and it feels like I'm getting banged over the head uh, on the other hand God guides our lives right and so you point to that grace his grace wide open arms he's always with you and you point to that guidance that in his grace he gives us that we can live in brand new every day as forgiven beloved child of God so what would you pray with me Dearest Jesus, uh, uh, we thank you for this uh, this last Sunday and this week that we can focus on the reality that we can overcome in your power, in your grace, in your presence, those times when loneliness is our companion. We pray, Lord, that uh, that your spirit would guide us to receive your grace uh, and, and to live our lives in the guidance that you give us. We pray in your name. Amen. Okay, so I um, have a good day today. Remember that God's with you, uh, and, and he puts people in your life for a reason, um, and he always keeps his promises. You can put your hope, your certainty in him. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. May God be with you.